And now? Um... It's like a magical family that uh, inspires each other to become the fullest realizations of who we are. It's love, you know, there's this huge amount of love. Even people you don't particularly like, you know, you, you can deal with it, like, because it's such a wonderfully loving community that, like, you know, minor disputes are just like that, just that minor. Me and my family, my, my biological family, were at a very negative point at the time. So the fairies were a really good support system when I met them as far as, like, connecting with um, other people that were like-minded and people that I, I felt comfortable being myself around, which I wasn't, which I had not seen prior to that. It felt um, like genuine connection. It didn't feel uh, there was an agenda at all, and that was nice. And especially people who are asking you not to define yourself and just like are kind to be kind. I really feel at home when I'm there. Oh, Jack! You know, it's my people. So. <laughs> I really get along with a lot of the sensibilities in terms of like ways of communication with each other or like more open sexual practices. And those are all very like surface sort of um, modalities that intersect to create a space where people are actively encouraging one another to be as like creative or flamboyant or present as possible. And honest, I think that's the main thing that I really love about the fairies. It's like you really can be totally honest with people and like uh, really express yourself, you know, and, and not be afraid, not be afraid at all. What I've encountered is people um, who really support each other, like genuinely have like a, there's a rhythm that you start to develop with people when you're living in community that way. Okay, so Harry Hay, who was like really important to the, to the history of the radical series, was really, really obsessed with the idea of the, like, uh, so living in between the worlds. Uh, between genders, um, and sort of just like fucking with society's norms and uh, and actually, actually the gay community's norms. That was like the sort of impetus for it. And so, being able to exist in this current climate of gayness in a way that is uh, my own, and I also have people around me that connect to that, and uh, I know that I'm always going to be safe in the fact that I'm a fierce faggot and that no one can take that away from me because I have people, right? It's like strength in numbers, right? It's like when you walk into the fairy camp and you just release everything and you're like in this land where you can... Anything goes. And you can make it whatever you want. You can make it all about drugs. or You can make it all about nature. You can make it all about sex. You can make it all about... Community. It chokes me up because when I first entered, I didn't know they were going to say welcome home, and when they said it, I felt so a part of something immediately that I knew I was going to make happen and be a part of. Freedom. You know, freedom of expression, freedom to um, grow, freedom to expand and many, just many different ways. It's a uh, really open, loving, giving community. Um, it means a strong sense of community where um, people are coming from a place of uh, seeking meaningful connection in the world that's filled with just symbols and a lot of a lot of um, presentation and appearance, but less substance. I think that fairies actually um, embody the philosophy of subject-subject consciousness very beautifully, which is about seeing the person in front of you as a subject and not just an object to whatever means you're seeking. I'm a believer in spirits and the environment, the earth goddess, and um, so I was drawn to the radical fairies, which have, you know, shared, what would you say, ideologies.
<laughs> fooling around and jumping around in weird <laughs> clothes cheers. and not really caring and, and enjoying nature <laughs> and enjoying substance <laughs> and enjoying spirituality and, um, and enjoying each other's company. As well as like the huge, or largely speaking, focus on like nature-based worship structuring and patterns. Like, I really love that. Like as someone who like identifies as a witch, like going to like fairy space where everything is sort of chaotic and beautiful and yet magical like really means a lot. The idea that I don't have to adhere to what like a heteronormative narrative says my love life has to look like. Like I don't want to live in a world where something that turns me on or inspires me. I don't want to be demonized for what gets me excited. I don't know, I think it's the Porter Circle in New York, which is a really harsh city. Where does we find that? It helps to define uh, the community that continues to be part of my own life and uh, the garden's life and you know, the culture, the creative culture of New York. But uh, mostly, though, it's just just joyous and fabulous, you know, and wonderful. But being a fairy is basically, in one word, freedom. But all right, I. I, uh, I find that there's all this mystery with the fairies. And it's, uh, I don't like to talk about it too much, and I feel like when I first got into it, people kept telling me, like, do not talk about it, just come and experience it. So that's usually what I like to tell people when they ask me about it. Just, like, if you feel called, just go and find out what it's about. Yeah, I talked about it. Yeah. 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 Yeah.